here, Charleston Race Week, uh, VX1 analysis. Uh, let's take a look at the results. I have uh, Cruzan, uh, Tim's boat, and also send it. Uh, Bill and Ashley here. So Tim got a five, and Bill got a nineteen. His first race on Friday. Let's look at the data. All right, we gotta show step details. Uh, it looked like Senna did do a 720 up at the uh, first winter mark, so that's going to show their, their second leg. But here you got distance sailed and speed 5.57 knots, and they sailed 2.2. Um, Cruzan sailed 2.19, a little bit less, and a smidge bit slower. So speeds are relatively within 0 0.6 tenths, about the same upwind. Um, downwind 2.2 with the circle a little bit and then um, and that's a lot for a circle so 9.4 a little bit slower we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, a third uh, third leg second upwind leg 5.66 a little bit slower 5.75 and a 2-1 a little bit distance a little more distance sailed there and then downwind 2.2 uh, cruzan sail uh, longer distance and slower so maybe a puff rolled through on that downwind leg and then here's the overall total so let's go take a look at the start it looks like both the boats started at the uh, pin end which looked to be a little bit favored here so we're just going to kind of play this out time is down here in the bottom right and let's see what the start time was Looks like it was right about here, 10.04, bam. Nope, I'm sorry, 10.05. So the last, I always like to look at the last two minutes, three. Here we go. Both boats a little bit closer to the line here. Coming up on a minute 15 here. Minute 10, I'm going to go ahead and play this out. And here we go. Still 40 seconds ago, still on port tack. Tacking over 25 seconds, which I would say would be a little late than normal. I know there's not a ton of boats on the line, but always hard just to tack at 30 seconds and protect and and be in line and away we go so definitely a little bit behind the line almost 20 seconds took to get to the line okay let's pause this i'm going to follow boat parameters out of focus on there we go this now. So a little danger here. You can see the mark is a little bit to the right. So starting down by the pin and trying to tack and get over, you can. I mean, they're not on ley line, but they got a long ways to go. So now trying to get back across. Looks like a little bit of a lift here. Both had a little knock there. You can see how, yeah, you can see how it's it's a lower angle here, a little lower, a little lift coming back here a little bit. But see the danger is right getting close to ley line again. We're close between the two here. So obviously, you know, and this Saturday was still playing in conditions. Dick's always playing in. But let's kind of check the angles here a little bit. 
you can see here this angle coming back is a little bit higher than this angle coming back then maybe sailing back on a lift here a little bit starting to fade here yeah so back in the cycle of the knock marks look a little bit more square to the wind right now Really shifty. I mean, a lot of this is, um, you know, in Charleston, it's not like it's consistent across the across the race course. So when you look at this, you always have to take it with a grain of salt because of how shifty and different across the race course um, it is. But it does really help you kind of, you know, big sail through a big duck here. It looks like both both these guys trying to get to the left side a little bit. But again, danger of the ley line. I would say they're probably past the ley line now. Sailing a lot hotter in speed trying to get down to the mark. Super, you can see the purple that's when you're over six knots. So both boats overstood the ley line here. By a lot. Amazing how much speed's lost on the jibes, though, isn't it? Going from plane, not to plane, and back, getting ripping again. <laughs> Sorry about the dog. Mailman must be here. Oh, yeah. It's going to get real barky here in a second. So, there you go. Place number one.